Lesson 16, I will use visual models to add and subtract two fractions with the same units. Okay, so today we're not going to use our math journal because instead we're going to be using this practice sheet. So I want you to go ahead and find this practice sheet in your math binder and I want you to get it out and have it ready. Okay, so let's think about 5 minus 4 for just a minute. What is 5 minus 4? Well, that's pretty easy, right? 5 minus 4 is 1. So let's say the number sentence using units of one, of ones, excuse me. So this is five ones minus four ones equals one one. Now you might think, machines, why am I saying that? That's kind of silly. I'm going to show you why. Let's say the number sentence if the unit is dogs. So we would have five dogs minus four dogs equals one dog. Well, let's say it with the unit as meters. 5 meters minus 4 meters equals 1 meter. Well, let's see how this relates to fractions. This time, let's use the unit as sixes. 5, 6 minus 4, 6 equals 1, 6. So let's see what that looks like written as a fraction. 5, 6 minus four sixes equals one six. So notice your denominator did not change, only your numerator, just like if this were apples or dogs or meters. This is just a unit. Five sixes minus four sixes equals one six. All right, now let's talk about how you can subtract. Now this is a pretty easy one, but we're gonna go ahead and use our very first number line on our practice sheet. And we're going to partition this number line into sixes. So first, let's divide it in half, and then let's divide each half into thirds. And then let's go back and count and make sure that we have six parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six, six, six. Okay? Okay, so let's just start over. All right, so let's go ahead, and you can see that I have labeled five, six, which is one six two six three six four six five six, and I'm going to take my pencil and we're going to count backwards to subtract sixes. So this would be one six two six three six four six. So five six, and above this we're going to label this minus four sixes. So five six minus four six equals one six. So this is one strategy for subtracting fractions or for modeling how you can subtract fractions. All right, let's try this same model again. So let's take your second number line and let's partition it into eighths so that we can model seven eighths minus three eighths. So we're gonna divide it into eight parts. So first I'm gonna divide it into half and then I'm gonna divide it into fourths. Now to make these eighths, I'm gonna divide every one of these fourths in half, just like this. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. All right, and each of these are eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label this seven eighths. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. So let's start here and we're going to count backwards three eighths. So this is one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. And I end up at one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. So seven eighths minus three eighths equals four eighths. Okay, so this is just your average subtraction, okay? All right, now, we're going to take a look at, this is actually our problem set, hold on. We're actually going to take a look at one other way on our number line, okay? Now, you can solve 7, 6 minus 2, 6 is lots of different ways, okay? You know that 7, 6 minus 2, 6 is equal to, what, 5, 6, right? So let's think about how we can draw that on our number line. All right, so we could label the endpoints from 0 to 2 because this is 7 sixes. All right, so that is an improper fraction. So let's start like this for a minute, okay? All right, so let's take our, our third number line and let's start from 0 to 2. And then the halfway point is going to be 1. And to show that these are sixes, we have to divide each hole into six parts. So you have to come through here and go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's really important that you pay attention to that. So we have seven out of six. So that's going to be 
1626364656666. So here's your 76, and if we go back to 6, now we are at 56. So 76 minus 26 equals 5 sixes, but I wanted you to see what this looked like when you had an improper fraction. All right, now let's go ahead and get out our problem set, and I want you to write your name at the top, and we are going to solve. I think that these are so easy that we can probably do these without a model. Okay, we're just going to think of these as units. So 3 fifths minus 1 fifth equals 2 fifths. 5 fifths minus 3 fifths equals 2 fifths. 3 halves minus 2 halves equals 1 half. 6 fourths minus 3 fourths equals 3 fourths. So I want you to notice that your denominator never changed in any of these subtraction sentences. It just became like a unit, like meters or centimeters or dogs or apples. All right, now we're going to solve 5 6 minus 3 6 <clears throat> with our number sentence. So 5, 6 minus 3, 6 is going to be equal to 2, 6. 6 eighths minus 4 eighths equals 2 eighths. 3 tenths minus 3 tenths would be 0 tenths, which means 0. 5 fifths minus 4 fifths equals 1 fifth. 5 fourths minus 4 fourths equals 1 fourth and 5 fourths minus 3 fourths equals 2 fourths. So again, I think mostly this part was pretty simple. Okay, all right, now we're going to move to something just a little bit more complicated. We're going to see what happens if in your answer you end up with an improper fraction. Like if you take a look at A, you can see 12 eighths minus 3 eighths equals 9 eighths. But this is actually an improper fraction because your numerator is greater than your denominator. So we created a number bond here so that we could change this into a mixed number because if you notice it says that you have to convert the difference to a mixed number. So let's try B. So 12 6 minus 5 6 is equal to 7 6's. Alright now we're going to convert this to a mixed number. So I've got okay so let's convert 7 6 into a mixed number. So how many sixes does it take to make a whole? Well, if you want the whole thing, you have to have six out of six. So what would I have to add to six six to get seven six? I would have to add one six. So as a mixed number, this will be one whole and one six. All right, let's try one more together. All right, nine fifths minus three fifths equals six fifths. So this is an improper fraction because my numerator is greater than my denominator. How many fifths does it take to make a whole? It takes five fifths. So what would be left over if I took out five six? Well, one, I meant fifth. <laughs> I have one fifth because five fifths plus one fifth equals six fifths. So six fifths is one and one fifth. Try D by yourself. Go ahead and pause the video and do as much of it as you can by yourself and then come back and let's see how you did. All right, so first of all, we're just going to subtract. 14 eighths minus 3 eighths is 11 eighths. Because my numerator is greater than my denominator, then this is a mixed fraction or an improper fraction. I want to convert it to a mixed number. So how many eighths does it take to make a whole? It takes 8 eighths. So I have to think, how much would be left if I took away 8 eighths? Well, I would be left with 3 eighths, because 8 eighths plus 3 eighths equals 11 eighths. 8 eighths is the same as 1 whole, and then I have 3 eighths. So 11 eighths is the same as 1 and 3 eighths. All right, let's try two more. If you feel confident, go ahead and do E and F by yourself, and then come back and check with me. All right, so let's take a look at... 8 fourths minus 2 fourths. Well, 8 minus 2 would be 6. That gives me a denominator of 4. So how many fourths does it take to make a whole? It takes 4 out of 4. And then 2 more fourths would make a total of 6 fourths. So 6 fourths is equal to 1 and 2 fourths. All right, 15 tenths minus 3 tenths equals 12 tenths. How many tenths does it take to make a hoe? 
it takes 10 tenths. To that, I add 2 tenths. So now 12 tenths is the same as 1 and 2 tenths. All right, now write the sum in unit form. All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of addition. 2 fourths plus 1 fourth is equal to 3 fourths. This is unit for form. 4 fifths plus 3 fifths, I was jumping ahead, equals 7 fifths. 2 eighths plus 5 eighths is equal to 7 eighths. 4 twelfths plus 5 twelfths is equal to 9 twelfths. So adding is just like the subtracting. All right, now we're going to do the exact same thing in 6 that we just did in the front when we were doing subtraction. So we're going to add these together, and if we get an improper fraction, we're going to complete it as, or we're going to convert it into a mixed number. So 4 fourths plus 3 fourths equals 7 fourths. Okay, 7 fourths is the same as 1 whole, which is 4 out of 4, plus 3 out of 4, which is equal to 1 and 3 fourths. Pretty much the same thing that we had right here, isn't it? We could have kind of already seen that this is 1 and 3 fourths. All right, so let's try C. 6 ninths plus 6 ninths equals 12 ninths. All right, how many ninths does it take to make a hoe? Well, it takes 9 out of 9. Well, 9 out of 9 would need 3 more ninths to equal 12 ninths. So as a mixed number, this is 1 and 3 ninths. Why don't you see if you can't do the rest of these by yourself? If you get stuck, you can always press play. Do as much of it as you can and then come back and check. All right, so 7 tenths plus 6 tenths is equal to 13 tenths. It takes 10 out of 10 to make a hole, and then I have 3 more tenths to make 13 tenths. So 13 tenths is the same as 1 and 3 tenths. All right, 5 6 plus 7 6 is equal to 12 sixes. Okay, so how much does it take to make a hoe? It takes 6 sixes. And then I have 6 more sixes to make 12. Now, a lot of kids will want to do this, 1 and 6, 6. But the best answer would be 1 and 1, which makes 2. Okay? 9 eighths plus 5 eighths equals 14 eighths. So let's make this into a mixed number. That would be 8 eighths and 6 eighths, because 8 eighths plus 6 eighths equals 14 eighths. So this would be 1 and 6 eighths. All right, so I think that the adding the fractions is probably pretty easy for you. So let's take a look. Now we've got one part that might be a little bit more difficult for you. Most kids can add and subtract fractions, but they have a really hard time modeling their answer. So let's take a look and see if we can do this. 7 fourths minus 5 fourths equals 2 fourths. So let's model this. 7 fourths is actually greater than a hoe because 4 fourths would make one hoe. So when I make my number line, I'm going to make this 0 to 2 because 7 fourths is more than 1 because 4 fourths makes one hoe. So here's my hoe. I have to divide each hole into four parts because these are fourths. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4. That's one hole. 1, 2, 3, 4. So all of these are fourths. So here is 7 fourths. 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths. And we're going to go back 5. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go back 1, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths. And that's going to take me to 2 fourths. So 7 fourths minus 5 fourths equals 2 fourths. So you can see when on the number line, when you're using the backwards arrow and you're going backwards, that means you're taking away. All right, so now let's use a number line to show the addition. Again, we're going to solve first. 5 fourths plus 2 fourths equals 7 fourths. You'll notice that we have the exact same digits here. These fractions belong to the same fact family. If 7 fourths minus 5 fourths equals 2 fourths, then 5 fourths plus 2 fourths equals 7 fourths. So our number line is going to look exactly the same. I have 0, 1, and 2, and I'm going to divide these into fourths. 
And I'm going to start at 5 fourths. So this is 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths. But this time I'm going to go forward 2 fourths, just like this. So I'm adding 2 fourths, and I end up at 7 fourths. So when you're modeling addition, you're going forward on the number line. When you're modeling subtraction, you're going backwards on the number line. And we're going to be talking more about adding and subtracting fractions in Lesson 17.